In this lesson, we are going to learn how to solve a system of n linear equations with n unknowns using LU decomposition. Now, LU decomposition basically means lower upper decomposition. Let's try to solve this example together. So the first thing we are going to do here is to represent this system of linear equations in the form AX equals B, where A is the coefficient matrix x contains the unknown variables x1, x2, x3, and then b consists of the values that we see on the right-hand side of each of the equations. Now, the main idea is to decompose a into l times u. So, we have for a equals l times u, we are going to substitute l u in place of a. Now, we have a to be the coefficient matrix, and then we want to decompose this a so that we have a lower triangular matrix times an upper triangular matrix. So considering this first equation, we are going to have LU times X, and that is equal to B. From this, we can let UX be equal to Z. So that if you substitute Z in place of UX into this equation, then we have L times Z equals B. So we call this equation one. And then, we have the second equation, ux equals z. So firstly, we solve equation 1 for z, we substitute z into equation 2, and then we can solve for x. So basically, this is the procedure we are going to use to solve this system of linear equations using LU decomposition. So now let's begin the actual solution process. So first of all, we are going to represent this system in the form ax equals b so we have the coefficient matrix we have one two three four five six three one negative two times the color matrix x1 x2 x3 and that is equal to values on the right hand side we have 9 24 and then four the next thing is we try to decompose a so that we have l times u so we are going to have a is equal to we have the lower triangular matrix now we are going to make sure that the elements in the principal diagonal are all ones elements above the principal diagonal are zeros and then we have elements below the principal diagonal to be non-zero elements. Now we call these elements multipliers. And these multipliers are the values that make the corresponding entries in the upper triangular matrix equal to zero. So we call these multipliers, we have the first one to be L21, so row two, column one, L31, row three, column one, and then L32, row three, column two. So this is the lower triangular matrix, this is L, and then we also note that these multipliers are basically called L values. And to find these L values, we need to find M values. So we say that the L values for the first one, L21, is equal to negative of M21. L31 is equal to negative of M31. And then L32 is equal to negative of M32. Now, in the next moment, we are going to know how to find these M values. So we have the L part times U. So U, we have components U11, U12, U13. And then we have U22, U23, and then U33. Elements below the principal diagonal are all zeros. So this is the upper triangular matrix. Also notice that this upper triangular matrix is the same upper triangular matrix that is obtained at the end of the forward elimination steps of naive Gaussian elimination method. Which means that when you want to find the U, the upper triangular matrix, you don't do any row swap. You don't do any row or column swap. So we are going to decompose this coefficient matrix into a lower triangular matrix times an upper triangular matrix. So let's do that. So we have 
A to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 1, negative 2. Now the main idea here is to represent this as an upper triangular matrix. Now in so doing, we also obtain the multipliers to also form the lower triangular matrix. So at this point, we are going to do forward elimination using naive Gaussian elimination method, which means that we are not going to do any row or column swap. Here we have three rows, so we are going to perform two forward elimination steps. In all, we want to make these three values go to zero. So in the first step, we make these two values go to zero, and then later we make this value also go to zero. So let's begin with the first forward elimination step. So we consider this to be the pivot row and that's one to be the pivot element. Now to make these two values go to zero, what do we do? We perform elementary row operations on row two and then row three. Now for row two, to make this value go to zero, we are going to multiply row one by four over one. So four over one times row one and then we subtract the results from row two if we do that for row two first element we have four so four minus four over one times one that goes to zero and then for row three we also perform elementary row operations that's where we have we multiply row one by three over one so we have three over one times row one we subtract that from row three first element of row three is three 3 minus 3 over 1 times 1 is 0. So let's perform the operation. Actually, row 1 remains the same. So we have 1, 2, 3. And then for row 2, we have first element 4 minus 4 over 1 times 1. That is 0. And then we move on to column 2. We have 5 minus 4 over 1 times 2. That becomes negative 3. To column 3, we have 6 minus 4 over 1 times 3. That becomes negative 6. We move on to row 3. Row 3 first element we have 3 minus 3 over 1 times 1. That is 0. Column 2 we have 1 minus 3 over 1 times 2. That becomes negative 5. And then we have column 3 negative 2 minus 3 over 1 times 3. And that also becomes negative 11. So we succeeded in making these two values go to 0. Now let's move on to the second forward elimination step. We want to make this value go to zero. So what do we do? We perform elementary row operations on row three. And what is the operation? We are going to multiply row two because this time row two becomes the pivot row and then negative three becomes the pivot element. So we multiply row two by negative five over negative three. And then we subtract the results from row 3. Now, negative cancels out negative. So we can simply write this as row 3 minus 5 over 3 times row 2. So row 1 and then row 2 remains the same. And then for row 3, we have 0 minus 5 over 3 times 0. That is 0. We have negative 5 minus 5 over 3 times negative 3. That is also 0. And then lastly, we have negative 11 minus 5 over 3 times negative 6. And that is negative 1. So basically, this is the upper triangular matrix which we obtain after forward elimination steps of naive Gaussian elimination method. Now, we are going to write down the multipliers. So for the multipliers, for the multipliers, the first one is we have m21. Now for m21, that is going to be the coefficient of r1 here because this is the value that makes this value go to zero. So we are going to have negative four. That is m21, negative four. Similarly, m31, we are going to have negative three. And lastly, M32, we are going to have negative 5 over 3. Now, since the L values are basically opposites of the M values, we are going to have 
the opposite of negative 4 to be 4 so we can simply write negative 1 times negative 4 and then we have 4 and then we move on to L31 that is equal to 3 and then L32 that is equal to 5 over 3 so basically these are the L values we are going to put in the L matrix so we are going to have L also being equal to we have 1 1 1 in the principal diagonal 0 0 0 here and then we are going to have 4 3 5 over 3 so primarily what this means is that we've been able to decompose this coefficient matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 3 1 negative 2 into a lower triangular matrix having components or having elements 1 0 0 1 0 1 4 3 5 over 3 times an upper triangular matrix of elements 1 2 3 negative 3 negative 6 negative 1 so 1 2 3 negative 3 negative 6 negative 1 and then here we have 0 0 0 so this is L times u now after doing this we need to solve for z using equation one so for lz equals b that is equation one we are going to solve for z so we have l which has elements 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, 0, 3, 5 over 3, 1, times, we have the z values to be z1, z2, z3, equal to b, 9, 24, so here we are going to do forward substitution to obtain the values of z1 z2 and then z3 so for the first one we consider row 1 we have 1 times z1 0 times z2 0 times z3 notice that column 1 corresponds to z1 column 2 z2 column 3 z3 so we have 1 times z1 that is z1 equals 9 because we are going to have 0 times z2 which is 0 plus 0 times z3 which is also 0 so we have z1 equals 9 now let's move on to row 2 so for row 2 we are basically going to have 4 times z1 which is 4 times 9 plus 1 times z2 so we have z2 0 times z3 which is 0 so this is equal to 24 so we are going to have z2 equals 24 minus, we transpose this to the right hand side, 4 times 9 is 36. So we have z2 to be equal to negative 12. Now let's move on to row 3. That's where we have 3 times z1, z1 is 9 plus 5 over 3 times z2 which is also negative 12 and then plus 1 times z3 which is z3 equals 4 so here 3 goes here once 3 goes here 4 times 3 times 9 that is 27 5 times negative 4 negative 20 plus z3 equals 4 so here we have 7 plus z3 equals 4 we transpose 7 to the right hand side that is 4 minus 7 and that is equal to negative 3 
negative 3. So we have z3 to be equal to negative 3. Now these are z values. We are going to substitute these z values into equation 2. So let's move on to equation 2. So for equation 2, that is ux equals z. So we have the upper triangular matrix, which is, which is times x1, x2, x3 equals the z values we have z1 to be 9 z2 negative 12 z3 negative 3 so let's try to find the values of x1 x2 x3 so here we are going to do back substitution so we have negative 1 times x3 so negative x3 equals negative 3 therefore we divide through by negative 1, negative 1, and then we have x3 to be equal to 3. Next, we move on to row 2. So we have 0 times x1, that is 0, negative 3 times x2. So negative 3, x2, and then minus 6 times x3. x3 is 3, that is equal to negative 12. So here, we are going to have negative 3x2 minus 18 equals negative 12. So we have negative 3x2 equals negative 12 plus 18, which is equal to 6. We divide through by negative 3 by negative 3, and then we have x2 to be equal to negative 2. So this is the value of x2. And then we move on to row 1. We have x1. So 1 times x1 is x1. Plus 2 times x2. Which is negative 2. Plus 3 times x3. Which is 3. And that is equal to 9. So we have x1 minus 4. Plus 9. Equals 9. So 9 cancels out 9. We are left with 0 here. Therefore, we have x1 equals 4. Therefore, therefore, we have the solution vector x to be equal to the column matrix x1, x2, x3. And that is equal to, we have x1 to be 4 x1 is 4, x2, negative 2, x3, 3.